Hi, everybody. Welcome to Treasure Time. In Treasure Time, we read stories which are about science, technology, engineering, and math. And then we have art. We interpret our books through art. And we have STEAM Plus. And the plus is about everything else that happens in kids' lives, like feelings, getting along with people, bullying, dealing with isolation. Today, we're going to read some books about gardens and birds. And the first book I'm going to read is How Groundhog's Garden Grew. Groundhogs and rabbits sometimes can be a pest for farmers because you know what they do? They go into the farmer's garden, Mr. McGregor's garden, and they eat up his plants. And that makes him very upset and angry. And this book is about a groundhog who tried to be a good groundhog and grew his own garden. This book is called How Groundhog's Garden Grew. And this book is by a wonderful author named Lynn Cherry, who writes lots of good books about the world and the environment and saving our planet. Little Groundhog was hungry, beautiful, scrumptious, irresistible, he, he exclaimed as he crept into a neighbor's lovely vegetable garden. He was nibbling on some fresh green lettuce when Squirrel rushed down from her tree. Little Groundhog Squirrel scolded, this food does not belong to you. If you take food that belongs to others, you will not have a friend in the world. Why don't you plant your own garden? I'm sorry, Little Groundhog told her, embarrassed, but I don't know how. Well then, replied Squirrel, I will show you. First, you will need seeds, said Squirrel. Little Groundhog helped Squirrel and her friends pick beans and peas from pods and seeds from a sunflower's drooping head. They collected seeds from inside peppers, cantaloupes, cucumbers, and tomatoes. Squirrel chewed a hole into a pumpkin and handed little groundhog the gooey seed, saying, we'll dry these in the sun, then we can plant them in the spring. And here are some of the seeds that they collected. It must be late summer because all these vegetables have grown. A chill breeze blew in. It's time to dig up potatoes, Squirrel said. Little Groundhog watched Squirrel and thought, that looks like fun. And so he took a rake, rake and poked around for potatoes too. When they were finished, Squirrel added composted leaves to her garden as a fertilizer for the coming year. Squirrel put aside a few potatoes and the tops of onions in a burlap sack. She put the seeds they had collected in tins to keep them dry and put the tins into her sack. And here are carrots and onions and a sweet potato and radishes and parsnips. And these are potato flowers. November's snow flurries told Squirrel that winter was on its way. 
Sweet dreams, little groundhog squirrel said as she curled up in her tree hole. See you in the spring, little groundhog said, snuggling into his deep earthen burrow. As winter snows blew, little groundhog and squirrel slept down under the ground. In February, little groundhog awoke and drowsily ambled up to the burrow entrance. The wind made him shiver. He saw his shadow and hurried back inside. Oh my, he said, this will be a long winter. Weeks later, he awoke with a start. It's spring, he shouted, and up he scuttled to the burrow entrance. There he met Squirrel carrying the burlap sack they had filled with potatoes and the tins of seeds. Rise and shine, Squirrel said, it's planting time. Look, the potatoes are sprouting. First, we'll cut them into little pieces with two sprouts each, then, We'll plant them with their sprouts pointing up and cover them with the soil. Each sprout will grow into a new potato plant. Next fall, we'll dig new potatoes out of the ground. Now let's find a sunny place for your garden. When they found a good spot, Squirrel told Little Groundhog, First, we need to dig in the soil to loosen it up. Next, they planted the cut up potatoes. Then they dug rows and sprinkled in carrot, beet, parsnip, and radish seeds. All these vegetables will grow under the ground, Squirrel told him, so we call them root crops. They covered the seeds with dirt and gently watered them. At the end of each row, squirrels stuck markers to help them remember what they had planted. Squirrel told little groundhog, plants need lots of sun. We'll plant taller vegetables in the back so they won't cast a shadow over the shorter ones. So behind the row of root crops, they planted seeds of tomatoes, peppers, and leafy greens. Some vegetables grow on vines, said Squirrel. She pounded sticks into the ground for the pea and bean plants to climb. Some plants grow very big, said Squirrel. They planted the seeds of pumpkins, zucchini, yellow squash, sunflowers, corn, and artichokes far apart to give them room to grow. The next day, Squirrel said, let's visit my garden. I want to show you the plants that come up year after year all by themselves. They're called perennials. Sure enough, shoots of raspberries and asparagus were already poking up through the ground. Squirrel dug up a frilly young asparagus plant for Little Groundhog's garden. She told him, you'll need to wait three years before this asparagus has nice thick stems to eat. Little Groundhog said, thank you. I'm off to plant my perennials. Every day, Little Groundhog watched and waited and watered his garden. Then one day, tiny seedlings emerged. What a wonder, he exclaimed. But as they grew, he worried. Are these seedlings too crowded? What should I do, he asked Squirrel. Pull some up and plant them somewhere else, she said. Little Groundhog pulled up a few seedlings and looked at them. The peas, the beans, and all the seeds had split open. From each, a root grew down and a shoot grew up. Little Groundhog transplanted some seedlings where they had more room to grow. Wren and Praying Mantis said to Little Groundhog, 
If you promise not to harm us with bug spray, we birds and insects will help you with your garden. We will eat the harmful insects that hurt your plants, little groundhog promised. As the weeks passed, plants grew and blossomed. Bees, flies, and butterflies came to eat the sweet nectar and carried pollen from flower to flower. They told little groundhog, the wind, the rain, and we insects pollinate your flowers so they can become fruits and vegetables. Little groundhog noticed that after a flower was pollinated by an insect or by the wind, its petals dried up and fell off. Underneath was the smallest beginning of a tiny vegetable a tiny tomato, a tiny cucumber, a pepper, an eggplant, a pea pod, a zucchini. So this is how a garden grows. Little groundhog cried jubilantly. Tomatoes turned red, heads of cabbage grew, a sunflower seemed to explode from the top of a tall stalk. Snap peas, string beans, peppers, lettuce, and chard grew larger under the warm sun. Little groundhog rejoiced. He ate his very own vegetables, plain and fresh, from his very own garden all summer long. When fall came again, Squirrel wanted to share one more secret with Little Groundhog cooking, and so they stewed tomatoes, boiled corn, broiled potatoes, stir-fried veggies, and even stuffed and baked a zucchini, saving the seeds to plant next year. There was so much more than they could eat themselves. What will we do? asked little groundhog. We share, said squirrel. What a great idea, cried Little Groundhog. As they sat around the table, their friends exclaimed, thank you for inviting us to this amazing feast. Little Groundhog replied, thank you all for forgiving me for eating from your gardens last year. And thank you, Squirrel, for teaching me to grow my own. It's beautiful, scrumptious, irresistible. Let's eat. What a fortunate creature I am, he thought. Delicious, nutritious, homegrown food and wonderful friends to share it with. Little Groundhog grew into a big groundhog and became known far and wide for his annual Thanksgiving dinner. And that is how Groundhog's garden grew. And that is the story of Groundhog's Garden. Now I'd like to share a couple of songs with you. And the first song is about planting a garden. It's called Inch by Inch. And it talks about a hoe. And these are gardening tools and a hoe stirs up the soil and takes out the weeds after you've planted. And that's a farmer's garden's tool. And then there's a shovel or a spade. And that's for digging in the dirt and turning it over and digging a hole to plant your seeds. And then there's a rake. And that's for raking up stones or leaves or making the soil nice and smooth. And I hope you can do some hand motions with me in this song. This is called Inch by Inch, Row by Row. Gonna make this garden grow. All I need is a rake and a hoe. Inch by inch, row by row. Someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them 
from below and the rain comes tumbling down. See if you can do the hand motions while we sing this. Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All I need is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Plant your rows straight and long, nurture them with prayer and song. Mother Earth will make you strong if you give her love and care. Old crow watching hungrily from his perch on yonder tree. In my garden I'm as free as that feathered thief up there. Get ready to make your inches. Inch by inch, row by row. Gonna make this garden grow. All I need is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below and the rain comes tumbling down. And then there's another song that I'd like you to sing and know about, and it's, it's actually a game, and I hope you can do this with me. And this song is called Oats, and these are oats like oatmeal that you eat, and you can grow them, and this is how they look. Those are oat seeds and that will grow oatmeal and peas. Everyone knows what peas are. These are peas. They have a little white stuff on them, but you can plant these in the ground and you can get pods, plants, and get more peas. And beans, and there are lots of different kinds of beans and you can plant them and you can get string beans or you can get beans that you can make into soup, kidney beans, all kinds of beans. And barley, barley is a grain that we use in soups and stews and you can grow barley. And this is how this goes and I hope that you can do this with me. And it goes, oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Nor you, nor I, nor anyone knows how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Okay, now the farmer's gonna plant some seeds. First, the farmer plants a seed. Then he stands and takes his ease. He stamps his feet and claps his hands and turns around to view the land. Then the farmer waters the ground. Get out your watering can and watches the sunshine all around. He stamps his feet and claps his hands and turns around to view the land. And now, if I play this on the guitar, do you think that you could do what I showed you? Let's give it a try. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. But you know nor anyone knows how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Fur 
get ready to plant your seed. First the farmer plants a seed, then he stands and takes his ease. He stamps his feet and claps his hands and turns around to view the land. And now you're gonna water your seed. Then the farmer waters the ground. He watches the sunshine all around. He stamps his feet and claps his hands and turns around to view the land. Have fun planting seeds, everybody. And watching them grow. Happy gardening.